Greetings, I'm Rob Redden, and I'm pleased to know that you're giving me some time to share with you a message from God's Holy Word. Last week, we began a mini-series on anger and uh, how that it is addressed quite often in Scripture. Uh, we all know that anger can get us in a lot of trouble and it short circuits the cognitive uh, part of our brain many times. And, and I'm sure that the prison is filled with people that committed those particular acts because of anger, wrath, or malice. And so it bears scrutiny, examination from scripture, common sense, experience, and so today we're going to spend a little time looking at it again. I've titled this Diffusing the Bombs or Picking Up the Pieces. And I think that title conveys the idea completely. Before we get into this, let me refer you to Ephesians 4:26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. You know, anger can be a positive thing that seeks to right wrongs in appropriate and positive ways. Or it can be like letting a wild tiger out of the cage. It can be constructive. Often it is destructive. This is why we must control it rather than allowing it to control us. It is best to defuse the bomb than pick up the pieces. You know, perhaps there are many causes of anger as there are situations and human actions that make people angry. But the, for the most part, we can summarize the causes under a few headings. And the first is biological causes. Carol Travis, in her book, The Misunderstood Emotion, describes a boy who got along with everybody except on certain occasions he would have temper tantrums. He would, from time to time, go into a furious rage that looked like a seizure. Afterwards, the boy would cry and apologize, saying he couldn't help himself. To make a long story short, it was traced to bananas of all things. Shortly after he ate a banana, he would experience these outbursts. They eliminated the bananas from his diet and the, angries, the angry outbursts ceased. Anger, however, seldom is often treated so simply. But we do understand that allergies, brain disease, disorders of the body's chemistry, and perhaps genetic abnorm abnormalities can cause anger and at least make some people more prone than others to become angry. Even genetic temperament plays a part. If there is a physiological cause for the disproportionate anger, then there should be sought a physiological solution and or professional counseling and anger management. For the Christian, if there's a solution, it should be sought. You remember what Jesus said in Luke 5, 31. It is not for those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. That gives us authorization to seek the solution to fit the issue. If it's physiological, then obviously there needs to be a physiological approach. If it is mental, there needs to be a mental approach. And the mental and the spiritual and the physical are often entwined. And ultimately, if the soul is not okay, usually the mind and the body is not either. But, to go on, injustice is another major cause for anger. It certainly is the reason for the divine wrath against sinners. 
The actions of Jesus indicate anger at a sacrilege. And he wanted to right the wrong, John 2. Once Jesus was indignant at the disciples for their attitudes toward children. In Mark 10, 14. Most of us will get angry when we see unfairness, rudeness, mistreatment of the innocent or the weak, breaking the law. Anger as a result of injustice is one of the most valid reasons for anger and perhaps the only valid reason. Then there's frustration. Now, a frustration is an obstacle, an event, a person, a physical barrier that hinders our progress towards some goal. If we have that hindrance, then we become frustrated. Frustration often leads to anger. Dr. Gary Collins writes in Christian Counseling that frustration may come, A, because of what someone else has done or failed to do, B, because of unwanted events or circumstances, or C, because of our own failures or inabilities to reach some desired goal. The extent to which we feel frustrated, he says, will depend on the importance of the goal, the size of the obstacles, and the duration of the frustration. If a mild fr frustration, however, provokes our anger, we have a spiritual problem. Two of the fruits of the Spirit are lacking, patience and self-control, self -control, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And for that matter, frustration does not always lead to anger. It can also lead to positive action to lessen the frustration. If some something your mate does causes you to become frustrated communicate in a spirit of love and kindness using I statements instead of you statements let me give you an example I am frustrated when you fail to pick up your clothes and put them in the hamper or hang them up it makes me feel taken advantage of as if my time is not important please help me out I don't mind occasionally when you're rushed to pick up your clothes but I don't like feeling this way. You know, that's not bad. It's better than the alternative. Why are you so lazy? You think I'm your slave or something? When you married me, I never intended to sign on as your mother or your maid. You see the difference? You, you, you can provoke anger exacerbate one's own anger. A good verse to remember is Ephesians 4.15. Speak the truth in love. And you usually will not overreact or receive a reaction in anger. Then there's threat or hurt. When we feel or sense we have been rejected, put down, ignored, humiliated, unjustly criticized, or otherwise thre threatened, anger is aroused. Sometimes we feel that others demand too much of us, have unrealistic expectations, or treat us unfairly. Such threats threaten our self-esteem. And reminds us of our imperfections or limitations. Makes us feel so vulnerable that aggression and anger become ways to fight back. So often hurt is followed by anger. One psychologist wrote, Seconds after the event which arouse, arouses the hurt feeling, another feeling skyrockets into awareness anger. But you know, not everyone responds the same way to threats or hurts. Some take it in stride while others look for ways to get even. My son was, my son and I were driving down Wadsworth Boulevard in Denver a number of years ago, one sunny day, and some teen teenagers were 
uh, driving and riding in this big convertible with the top down. And the driver was being reckless and careless and carefree. Well, at the next stoplight, this guy behind him got out of his car, ran up to the driver, and punched him in the face. Blood was spewing all over the place. The driver jumped in his car and sped off. How do you respond when someone cuts you off in traffic or races to get the parking space that you've been waiting for so long? Some would respond with anger and a determination to get even because this may be viewed as a challenge of one's driving skills or stealing the rights to that parking spot. Others may be annoyed but conclude if that's the only way the other guy can boost his low esteem, then he's the one with the problem, not me. Whether or not we get angry depends on the way we look at it and how much esteem we have in ourselves. You know, we've talked about positive actions resulting from justified anger. Instead of joining in with someone's stupidity and racing down the highway to behave in foolish and dangerous ways, take down the license number, call 911, ask for the highway patrol, describe the dangerous and reckless driver, and give a good description of the vehicle and the license number. I talked to the highway patrol, and this is their advice. 50% of drivers have the potential of becoming involved in road rage. But that's just an example. It's not the only thing that we're talking about. Other people can pull our strings and push our buttons. But we have control of our reaction. Christians should realize that they do not receive their self-esteem from others, but from God alone. If you have confidence that other people's opinion of you is not as important as God's opinion of you, you won't be easily provoked. Another thing that causes anger is learning. Yes, learning. We're not talking about schoolwork, class time. Observation. Example, what we see in others. Why does the child have temper tantrums? To get his way. What if these fits of anger intimidate the parents to give in for peace and quiet? Just give in to him. I need some peace and quiet. Yes, in the process, you're creating a monster. One expert states that in nearly every situation, there was at least one parent who was also a very angry person. Nearly every situation. We have to look at that. We learn from our parents, our peers, from movies and video games, how to act when we are angry and what to get angry about. You know what Proverbs 22, 24, and 25 said? Do not make friends with a hot-tempered man. Do not associate with the one easily angered, or you may learn his ways and get yourself ensnared. If we have learned a certain behavior, and that behavior is not acceptable to God and causes issues between us and others, we need to get our heart right with God. Again, prisons are filled with angry people and anger. Put them there, directly or indirectly. What are the real solutions for defusing the bomb? If outbursts of anger is a work of the flesh, then we must be able to resolve it, repent, reform. Galatians 5.20, it, they are, it is, 
a work of the flesh. Let's not make any excuses or rationalization. Let's not blame our parents that we were born that way or blame God because we were born Irish or, or Italian or whatever. It's a learned behavior. Now, of course, if our anger is physically caused, we're responsible to seek help from professionals. They are there because Jesus said, it's not the whole that need a physician, but those that are ill. Now, if our anger is self-centered and is caused by frustration rather than injustices, then we need to look at our patience and self-control the two fruits of the Spirit. Plus, we need to ask ourselves, how deep is our faith in God's providence and sovereignty? We must understand that much of our frustration angers against God who may, in his wise plan, allow some frustrations in our lives so that we won't be adult spoiled brats. Remember, all the things in this world that frustrate us are for character building, that we might become like Christ. Jesus was made perfect through suffering. Do we think that we deserve to be an exception? Remember, James 1.20, Man's anger does not achieve God's righteous purpose. If we are angry, we must control it. It is what our text says. Ephesians 4.26, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. <clears throat> A couple points here. Be angry is not a command to... Be angry, although it sounds like it. <clears throat> this is what is called by grammarians as a permissive imperative. A teen may ask to borrow the parent's car to go to a movie with his friends. <clears throat> the parent says, go. That imperative is a permissive remark not a command. Excuse me. <coughs> God knows that we possess the capacity to be angry. And like any emotion, we can control it. But we must take responsibility for our emotions and let us allow the sun to go down on our anger. Now that's the command. It means don't stew. Don't let it continue building up like a bomb with a short fuse. <coughs> Excuse me. So in conclusion, there are biological causes of anger that need professional assistance to help gain control. And frustrations may require us to look closer to our at our patience and self-control. If the anger is disproportionate, then we must have a faith issue. If it's caused by threats and or hurts, then we need to seek the remedy, remedy, uh, remedy the problem through proper channels. Often anger results in revenge which is condemned by God in Romans 11 and Romans 12. So if our anger is disproportionate to these threats and these hurts, we need to look at our self-esteem and ask ourselves, are we depending upon the world for our self-esteem or from God? And if our anger is being caused from habit, from learning, we need to recognize that it can be broken and our behavior changed by the power of faith. 
<clears throat> and God's Spirit in our lives. You know, I have one more lesson on anger. I've had to be short on this lesson because I'm dealing with a cold, a bad uh, virus. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was able to do this today, but I almost got through without uh, a coughing spell. Next time we will look at a, closely at a few biblical examples and then look at our guidelines to help us learn anger management. I think you'll like it. A spell. Holy Father in heaven, we do know that you created us with the emotion of anger. That we can have a proper response to those things that are not right. Things that are going on in the world that is an expression of the devil in control through the lives of people that have yielded to him. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will help us to be able to address these issues in a righteous way and without causing harm by our lack of self-control. Father in heaven, we pray that you would give us grace to sustain us, that we might rectify the problem with your spirit, with your word, and that we might be examples of self-control. In Jesus' name, amen. We certainly enjoy your presence through this media, and we trust that uh, the lesson has been helpful. I certainly need it, and I think everybody does. If you're in our area, come and visit us at the Grover Beach Church of Christ. It's one block south of the main street, which is Grand. 202 South 8th Street is where you can find us. And we worship Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Or you can check the internet and uh, discover a Church of Christ near you. You will be an invited guest and treated very well. And so until we meet again, God bless you and keep you. Goodbye.